on behalf of the Board of Directors of the HEADS Consortium, I would like to welcome you to the, our 2020 Best Practice Showcase, celebrating technology, innovation for Hispanic success, success in higher education. My name is Imari Santiago, and I will be in charge of introducing the speakers of the breaking sessions of this group. Although we will have time for questions at the end, the presenters will let you know whether you will be able to address your questions at any time during the presentation. This presentation will be in English. We will appreciate that you change your mobile phones to vibration or silent mode in order to have your full attention during the session. Finally, please make sure you complete the evaluation form for the sessions and hand it before you leave this room. Your feedback and recommendations are very important to text. Now, we are ready to start. The title, the title of our presentation is UTR GB Hybrid Academy. And please welcome Professor Francisco Garcia, Professor Jessica Sanchez, and Professor Jessica Hadley from the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, we hear from the um, from the keynote speaker, Dr. Shea, right? The technology is touching every single point of our life, even the professional lives, right? So, at UTRGV, well, education in general would not extend to that. So that's why one of the um, one of the ideas from uh, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley is to create this hybrid academy in which we prepare faculty. Um, to uh, teach hybrid in a hybrid modality, including technology, of course. Um, some of the key, uh, key takeaways from this presentation, of course, is the, uh, the discussion about the hybrid academy, what we do, how we do it, how we implement this, what are some of the resources available so we can share that with you, and if you're doing something similar, you can share that with us, too. So it's going to be somehow interactive uh, presentation here. Um, just a, a little bit of uh, I guess uh, who we are, what we do at UTRGV, we're the, the latest component of the, the new kid in the block for UT system. And the UT system is the, the um, university system all over the state of Texas. Um, so we are located at the southernmost part of the state of Texas. We're actually in the border with Mexico, as you can see on the map on the left side. Um, so we cover our service area. It's the whole Rio Grande Valley, um, and we call it that because that's, that's the end of the Rio Grande, or the Rio Bravo. Uh, from Rio Grande City all the way to South Padre Island, so we have an island too. <laughs> Not only Puerto Rico, but we have an island. Um, some stats from the university, uh, 29,000 plus students. From that, 89, almost 90% of them are Hispanic for obvious reasons, right? Um, but the, um, so we're the second largest Hispanic institution. Um, there is one institution in, um, in Florida, International, Florida International University. It's the, the first one on that. Um, now in the online side, um, 684 online uh, sections we offer this past uh, fall semester. Uh, out of there, um, 15,000 students taking at least one online course. That's 52% of our students are taking at least one online. Majority of them are undergraduate, although most of the programs that we offer are graduate. But we offer a lot of courses uh, undergraduate. Um, so um, a lot of semester credit hours generated uh, 373 faculty that taught online. Now. Part of the mission or mission of the institution is, of course, student success. Now, student success, um, yeah, is, is focusing resources to, to students, right? But in our case, um, as, as a uh, uh, department that provides support to faculty, we also uh, believe that uh, faculty support is, is as important as the student support. And again, we're a quality matters institution. Quality is very important at our university, regardless of the um, delivery mode. It's if hybrid, online, face-to-face, -face, no matter what uh, delivery, quality should be there. So again, we're a quality matters institution. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Quality Matters. That's a, um, it's a nonprofit organization or institution that provides 
uh, guidelines, rubrics in terms of quality for online and hybrid teaching. Um, so 935 faculty and staff from our university have some kind of a relationship in terms of a training um, from Quality Matters. Um, in our case, the Center for Online Learning, all my instructional designers, including Jessica and Jessica, <laughs> <laughs> they're certified to certify uh, uh, teachers in, in Quality Matters or faculty members in Quality Matters. So Quality Matters also certify courses, make sure that, the, um, that those courses are uh, meeting the, uh, the quality standards for online teaching. So we got 44, 46 courses that meet quality matters at our university. Uh, just real quick, um, Center for Online Learning, which is the one that the department that we belong to is, it's, we're the support unit at the university for online and hybrid and any technology related to, to teaching. Um, we're under the division of research graduate in uh, new program development. We're on the academic side. We're not on the IT. We don't have anything against IT. In fact, we're partners with IT, <laughs> but we're academic. Um, again, we promote excellence, educational opportunities, student success. What's the most important is we promote quality and excellence and innovation. Um, as you can see on the previous map, we got different campuses all over the Rio Grande Valley. Main campuses are based in Edinburgh and Brownsville. Uh, that's where we have presence uh, too. And we're also a, a research focused institution. That means that we also do research in the things we do. We practice what we preach. Um, so yeah, we do a lot of research in terms of online hybrid, large online courses and things, things related to uh, online and hybrid. So hybrid courses. Uh, we usually take fall semester as the, the, the trend in terms of a number of courses, hybrids. As you can see from fall 2016, 123, now we're close to uh, 200 courses being offered um, in a hybrid modality. All right, so challenges. Is that mine? Yeah. It's mine? Okay, so some of the challenges um, I guess a little bit of history here. We were coming from two institutions, the University of Texas Brownsville and the University of Texas Pan American. Even though we're, we're prohibited to say that it was a merge uh, because they, they, those two universities closed the doors and became UTRGV, they're the same resources, same infrastructure, same students, same programs and everything. So all of those two institutions were merged. We shouldn't put merge, but, but they merged. <laughs> um, so, um, so different ideas came from different campuses, and, and uh, so we were called, I was, I was the one actually called to be uh, from the provost office to come with a, a process to ensure quality in the hybrid and online, uh, in this case specifically for, uh, for the hybrid. So we came up with this hybrid academy, that's what we're gonna be talking about the rest of the, of the presentation, so thank you. Thank you. I just spoke. So the problem that was happening is what we were seeing is faculty were having their own ideas of what hybrid meant, what, what, how to teach it. And so in our campus, we call it reduced seat. Um, but what the administration was seeing or hearing is that hybrid's meant to be both online and face-to-face -face instruction. But what was taking place is there was faculty that were just teaching face-to-face -face and there was no online interaction at all. So there's a big problem. They were not leveraging it to its potential. And so we began, called out to, to develop this professional development on hybrid learning. So in order to first develop it, before we could even begin to do that, we needed to be trained ourselves. So our instructional design team took a lot of trainings and we read books and actually had a, a, like a club, what's it called, a book club? And, uh, and also looked at journal articles to help us in the development. We took the Online Learning Consortium's uh, hybrid blended learning training. That was an excellent was course. Excellent. Yes, we had a lot of research based. We, we were asked to research different approaches. It was not just all the content given to us. It was also, we had to be self-directed as well. Quality Matters also had a workshop, as, I mean, a professional development as well. Um, there was other trainings that we took. Um, the articles that we looked at too, we were looking at different things when we're looking at journal, journal articles. And at the end, we're gonna actually have these articles 
to the side here. And actually one of your handouts that you have actually has the resources that we use. So that resource, you can use that. I know this is when we are developing it, so if, and we can add later on to it. Um, but we looked at the hybrid approach, best practices and teachings online. We love uh, McGee and Rice. They were an excellent resource. When you're looking at cooperative learning, we also learned like Michael Sweet, we're gonna mention him. Michael Sweet, Sweet. Sweet. singular, not plural. <laughs> Uh, we looked at uh, professional development best practices. We also looked at drivers and barriers, thematic analysis, hybrid approach, adoption frameworks, because there's different approaches to blended learning. So we needed to prepare ourselves before we could actually start developing that professional development. And so a little bit of background about blended learning, and then uh, Jessica's gonna chime in too, because I tend to forget some things, and she helps. So like I mentioned before, there's different names to blended, right? There's hybrid, there's reduced seat for us, for our, for our campus. Um, mixed modality, do you guys have any other names that it goes by? Hybrid, blended. Yeah, same here. Um, and so then, there's also what we see also in the literature, there's so many different definitions out there as well. And actually research has shared like one of the reasons why, so it's not a common, it's not uncommon why faculty are using different approaches because there's so many also different variations in definitions as well. Lack of professional development, lack of uh, technology support. So there, there's different things at play that are actually have helped us in uh, direct our, in our professional development. For us, UTRGV goes by the Texas Higher Coordinating Board. Um, so basically, and I know it's not an in-depth uh, definition, um, it's a course in which a majority, more than 50% and less than 85%, uh, the planned instruction occurs when the students and instructors are not in the same place. It doesn't talk about the pedagogy as far as the face-to-face, -face, but we deal with that in the workshop and the pedagogy of what ha takes, should take place online. But we, we, will we, we address that. But not only that, so like I mentioned before, so there's different approaches also to blended learning. So rotation model, which we see K through 12, where you have uh, maybe a section for computer labs, a section for problem solving, a section for X, Y, Z, and during the class time, they're actually rotating. It's like centers. Yeah, different stations. Uh, high flex, and I like to call it a la carte, or the buffet, um, where that takes place is you have online and uh, an online course running throughout, and uh, each, it's synchronous to the face-to-face -face time, where you also have live sessions presenting the same information, maybe having some interaction as well. But the, the, the idea with the high flex is, and it's kind of nice, is if you're struggling with a particular concept, let's say you're teaching, having a math course and then Pythagorean theorem comes up, and I'm kind of weak in that, I need more help in that. So during that week, I can decide, you know what, I'm gonna go to the face-to-face -face class so I can have more hands-on. And then the rest of the class, if I'm good with the rest of the concepts, then I can just go online on my own. So that's the high flex model. And then you have blended online and blended face-to-face. The idea behind that, when it's blended online, it's more concentration to the online component, blended face-to-face, -face, more time invested in the face-to-face -face component. That's the idea behind those. But we, we decided, because in our first iteration of this workshop, we, we like, hey, it was your, it's your option, you can decide which model you want to go with. And every single participant chose a different model, I <laughs> guarantee you, <laughs> and it was, it led to our decision to focus on the flipped classroom approach. <laughs> so we changed it. So we now focus on flipped classroom. There wasn't a choice if it was, like, this is the method that you're gonna take. Um, and the idea behind that, and let me get behind this, and, uh, the online component basically, at the beginning of the week, you have your resources, your lower order thing you remember, understand, apply, uh, basically learning the material, reading it, hearing the instructor's micro lectures. Uh, we're asking for two to three per module. Um, you can also, we also recommend curated content too as well that they can look at. But so the content was taken care of online, right? Um, you may have a pre-assessment here because you, the idea between the flipped classroom approach is you need to be prepared to come to class. You have, you need to have read and watch the materials because we're gonna do some hands-on activities so that, so that you can apply the concepts. So the pre-assessment may be right here. And then we go to the face-to-face -face component and this is where we have student-centered learning so we, it's not the teacher that drives it where it's the sage on the stage, it's actually like student driven. So having opportunities to interact with their peers, problem solve, do discussion forums, uh, case studies and so on. And so the students will then, uh, there'll be interaction and the instructor is there to facilitate the process of learning. And so that, that's the FaceTime. Um, 
they will probably do some of this, uh, some parts of the summative assessment here, but then they'll move on. Once the discussion is done, they'll move on to, to complete their, their, their assessments, assignments that they have to do. They can further the discussions online. And then the following week, new content, new material, or the following module, new content, new material, uh, to, to proceed the cycle all over again. So that's the idea between the, the, the flipped classroom approach. And it's not something new. We, we've seen this. It's been a while. It's been out there. So best practices, right? Because people want to hear about best practices for, plan, for, for hybrid learning. So we wanted to share some, some effective practices that should take place in the online and on the face-to-face uh, -face environment. Um, so first off, of course, in the online environment, it's not just relying on the text, but multiple forms of representation of the materials, right? Universal design for learning. Um, so we're looking at asking our faculty to develop pre-recorded lectures so that students can at their own convenience look at particular topics uh, and, uh, and they can relook at those particular topics at their convenience at their own time and in greater depth. Uh, so we recommend uh, like five to 10 minutes, no more than 10 minutes of the, of the video. We're not saying taking, taking a one hour lecture and making it 10 minutes. We're saying no, segmented. And what you find when you actually develop those micro lectures is your one hour lecture that would have been one hour is actually a lot less because you're more focused on the material and the content. So it becomes more streamlined. And the nice thing about those videos too, and I know I talk too much because I, I digress from the topic a little bit, <laughs> is because uh, you can reinvest it. Like you can use it in another course and like, hey, if there's a gap in the other course, I can use this video to, hey, last, the, the last semester or the, the, in the previous course, we learned about this. If you kind of forgot about it, let's go back to this video and so you can reuse. We also recommend asynchronous, asynchronous discussions. So the online envir environment, right? Continue the discussions taking place online to go more in depth. Uh, and like how the keynote speaker was talking about presence and interactivity, it's really important to have those uh, continued, uh, that community building in that course, not just in the face-to-face -face time, but carry it out into the online time. Formative assessments. And, there are low stakes assessments, but it's just, those are there just to make sure that they're actually reading the material. And it's a, it's a way to, to create accountability. And that's something important with cooperative learning, accountability, and in the flipped classroom approach. So then, so this is what takes place online. I know we didn't talk about all of the practices, uh, but this is just a short, uh, short bit of information. Then when you get to the face-to-face -face time, you want to have instructor-guided activities and something important about this too is for those activities, you need to have detailed instructions. You need to be prepared. Because if you don't have detailed instructions, students, it's not gonna go smoothly. So a lot of time is gonna be wasted addressing questions and, and trying to go over things over again. So it, it needs to be planned. Student-centered tasks, the group work, problem-solving simulations. We think about a proximal zone of development where we have support structures. So it's not just the student alone learning by themselves. You actually have a group of peers helping each other out. And then you also have yourself as the instructor going around and also like if there anyone's stuck, you can address any questions that they have while they're working on their tasks. And again, we emphasize not only accountability online, but accountability face-to-face -face, because they have to be prepared. Um, face to, and something, because yes, we've seen this in our institution, so I'm not sure if you've seen this in yours, but uh, what the people have been using the face-to-face -face time when they were focused to more to the online environment is when people, students came face-to-face. -face. So there was the other direction where the, the one, one common uh, approach problem was just focusing on the lecture and no online component. Then there was another group focused on the online component and then when we met face-to-face, -face, just administer exams and that was it. And that's a problem. It's a big, big problem. <laughs> they were not leveraging it to its potential. And so these are things to keep in mind when you're, when you're going for the, when you're thinking about the different effective practices. And of course, again, this is not all inclusive, just some, some tips. So what should happen in the face-to-face -face time? <laughs> uh, we did this last night, like we were working on it. <laughs> so imagine online course, you're expecting them to actually have read the materials, watch the video lectures, whatever you selected, right? And then, so there's, these are two different approaches that we're kind of giving, right? So Sweet, in his article, it was really nice. He described, so if you don't have a formative assessment done online, like a quiz to do online for accountability, you can have an individual quiz done in the beginning of class. And then they turn that into you. So that's the individual accountability. You're supposed to have read, this is for a grade, individual accountability. Then you get them into groups. And in groups, they go ahead and answer the questions together. 
And this, this is nice because you have peer, peer to peer interaction. They discuss the questions. Those that actually prepared will have be, be better informed those that are not prepared. And so basically they have the group quiz and then that's counted as another grade. Not a grade, but a bonus that's point. A bonus. So the, when the group gets together, they have to um, confer on the answers. They, yes. have to, they have to all have the same answer. Then the group shares that with the instructor um, here in the check-in. So once they finish the quiz as a group, then they check in with the instructor. They check in with the instructor. <laughs> And um, and so then the instructor knows how each group performed. They know what obviously the right answer is. So the instructor can then address any misconceptions in like a small lesson, a, a very short lecture, um, and then they can move on from there. That group work is only worth bonus points. It can only help their grade. It can never hurt them. So students are more likely to participate in that knowing that if they're the ones who prepared and their classmates didn't, they're not going to be penalized for them. And then there's a micro lecture time or micro lesson basically to address. So if students are still struggling with concepts, this is a great time to address those misconceptions or problems. So then you take some time. So we're not saying don't have any time of, of micro learning taking place in class. You can actually lecture in class, but don't take like, but break it down with the interactivities and so on. And then we have this funny, this fun thing here, because you have, like, you, this is where you have your group activities. You can actually have one complex activity, really hard activity that's going to invest the majority of the time of the class to do. Um, and then once that complex activity is done, uh, you should have a, a Q&A session to address any questions from that process, and then have a summary and uh, a summary to go over kind of to provide closure to the lesson. Because we often forget to give closure to like, okay, now that you did this, here are some key points or key ideas that you, sh you should have taken away from this process. And if you didn't, then blah, 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 whatever. Right, so you give them some information. So that's a complex. Another one is, okay, maybe you have more than one group activity. So we call it the group activity cycle. And in this group activity cy cycle, you always begin with detailed instructions, give them guidelines, Maybe you keep those instructions on the board while everyone else is working in groups. That way they can always refer to it. Um, then, you have, uh, then you have them do their group activity. And then again, there's a share and recap. So you, for accountability's sake in this process as well, accountability is important, it's always emphasized, um, is we want every group to share and different members of the group to share. So that's something that we want to make sure to do. So that way, uh, there's nobody slacking. And in Sweet's uh, sweet article, he said, that's if you're considering, like, what size of group should I have? The size is three, no more than three. Because otherwise, you get bigger groups, you get people that maybe slack off and let others uh, take care of everything. And then, oops, sorry, the other one was just simply, I know, I don't know how much I'm here. Uh, the other one is just like, uh, maybe you have the, the, the formative assessment online, a Blackboard quiz, for example, for us, a Blackboard quiz. Then, what if in that case, if you have a quiz online, then you have homework. You have homework to look at the data, and then look at what areas the majority of the students are having struggles with. That way, when you come back to class, you're going to do a lesson to go over the misconceptions. What I would think then to do is, like for STEM classes, for chemistry, math, physics, I, I would then create similar questions that of the problems that they had problems with, and then have them do them as a group to see if they got it. And the thing again is, because it's in a group, they're gonna be learning from each other as well. So you'll have people with strengths in that group and they'll be helping the others, teaching them, or you uh, as well, going through the, the, the course, help them as well. And then you can do any of the above combination activities. Just, this is just ideas to give for the face, face time. So our workshop, back to our workshop. <laughs> um, so if we we're gonna teach hybrid, about the hybrid approach, and we're, if we we're gonna focus on the flipped classroom approach, then it would make sense for us to offer it in a flipped classroom approach. So we did that. So our face-to-face -face time was to review. So first, of course, there were, uh, fac we asked faculty to review the materials that we created. We had micro lectures. We created our content through soft chalk. Uh, we also had assigned tasks for them to do. Um, and I have, um, those tasks will be going to be used for their course. So these are just busy work. They're going to be artifacts used for their course. Um, and when they come into cl the class time, We'll review the concepts because they took the soft chalk lesson. Uh, there's some built-in quizzes in built into soft chalk. 
Um, we also have hands-on activities. So, so for example, when we did talk about assessments, we also talk about rubrics, developing rubrics. We're gonna actually have them develop those rubrics there as well, so hands-on. Um, we can address questions and concerns. We actually also invite guest lectures. So when we talked about learning objectives, we invited Letty and she took care of introducing that concept and we have that activity for them to work together to develop their objectives. Um, and then of course, each faculty has an assigned instructional designer. So whoever work, uh, participates in our workshop, so not only do they have a facilitator, they also have a, uh, an instructional designer that will be there for them to address any other questions, if they're stuck on something, need ideas, that kind of thing. That's it, right? And we are Quality Matters subscribed, as mentioned before, and that is embedded into many of our workshops. So all the workshops that we have, Quality Matters is embedded in, in it. It drives our framework. We have a backwards design approach, and I'm going to show you the blueprint in a little bit. So it does drive our, our professional development. We also use it to evaluate the design of the course. So online, hybrid, we use it to, to, for, it, for that purpose as well. As mentioned by Francisco, all our faculty are required that teach, teach online and hybrid to take the Quality Matters training as well. Um, there are some specific annotations also that address blended learning in, in, in the Quality Matters rubric. So we make sure also to do some emphasis on that as well. Our blueprint. Our blueprint is embedded in every workshop because what we want them to do is outline their course. They have a plan for their course. And we do it systematically. So we have modules that are focused on learning objectives. So then we have them built the learning objectives for their whole course. And then before, uh, so it's, we do it one column at a time. So we have, we address one module for learning objectives, one module for assessments. They're not gonna fill this whole thing out all at once. So we wanna make sure that everything is planned sequentially. So at the end of the course, they'll have a full bl blueprint for the course and they'll begin developing it. Um, so this is just an example. Adjustments that we made from our first, so we, we, we've had several iterations of this workshop. So this is what we learned. <laughs> Sorry, so we did a dedicated module. So uh, for us, accessibility, it's the law. We have to make it, all courses need to be accessible regardless, online and hybrid. So we have a dedicated module for accessibility. We have a dedicated module for learning activities because time for face-to-face -face time, what type of inter interactions should we use, and so on. Uh, we incre that, that increased our modules. Um, another request that was made by a faculty is to provide a closure ses session. So once the workshop was over, like, hey, let's, let's, let's share what each other's done, what each other's plans were, so we would have a dedicated session on, on that. <laughs> uh, change live sessions. So, yes, so before we were the sage on the stage, so we weren't using the flipped classroom approach. During our live sessions, we would lecture, but we, what we did is we changed it to be uh, more interactive, so they had to have more hands-on. And we, again, like we mentioned, we did guest speech. Um, we also showed how to utilize different ways for micro lectures. Vid micro videos, it doesn't have to be used only for presenting content. It's also to address maybe open up the week's content. It can also be used to talk, discuss an assignment that's really, di really difficult. So kind of expand on that. Uh, also used for demonstration, like for, for nursing, like having to show different techniques. Um, we, for specific artifacts, um, we learned our lesson too there. So the first offering of it, we only asked for three modules of the course to be fully de uh, three modules of the course to be developed to meet the, the the expectation of the workshop. And then we thought, well, of course, then they're going to follow through, and they're going to continue on with the next modules. That wasn't the case. And so we're like, well, maybe we just need to increase it to six to half the course. No, we had to ask them to develop the whole course to ensure that it meets quality matters standards. So that was now <laughs> we increased the step, and it is incentivized our workshops but we, th that was one of the things that we asked them to do. Um, so we also asked them that every module have micro lectures uh, for this flipped classroom approach. So, the different uh, so there's different activities that related to the course, types of, uh, type. so we asked for them to build those artifacts. Plan for formative assessments, ways to, sh to share accountability. And this is a breakdown of our workshop. So we started off with a launch meeting to share our expectations. Uh, oh, there's a call to participate, of course, and people volunteer, this is voluntary. Uh, Hybrid Academy, we gave a launch meeting to share expectations. And then we're gonna jump and actually go through this in the next slides. But just to let you know how it's broken down, 
is each module has an introduction, of course. It has a micro lecture of what, what, what the concepts are about. We have a soft talk lesson to talk that talks about the materials more in depth. We have a faculty corner, which is nice. Faculty wanted to hear from faculty. So we interviewed several faculty and talking about this particular topic. So then faculty got to hear what others were doing and, and using the flipped classroom approach. Um, we have discussion forums also and assigned tasks for them to develop. And then so what we're gonna do next is actually go into Blackboard and we're gonna actually show you how each Blackboard so platform is working. We have eight modules. The first one is what is hybrid, and the reason we developed that one is because we have so many definitions and so many words, and a lot of faculty, of course, are subject matter experts. They are not trained to teach their content, so this is kind of the primer to get everyone on that same playing field so that we can continue with that common language, that common understanding of what good teaching is, and especially good hybrid teaching. This, yes. this is for faculty. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, I went down. <laughs> it's okay. So this is this also introduces them to the overall structure of the workshop. So you know the order of everything, how to navigate. Um, they have their list of things that they need to read and do. These are the things that they need to complete throughout this module and when they're due. Here is an example lesson. We'll do the learning activities one. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, and then here's one of the faculty corners. Go ahead and play it out. Oh, I don't know if so this is one of the videos that we created. In my big lectures, I actually do have augment, and in the lab, I use a full hybrid so for the um, lecture courses with the web augmentation, which is much so that's the idea. We asked a bunch of faculty that we know do a good job of hybrid teaching, and we interviewed them. What is it to them? What is what does it look like in their course and so on? So for each module, we have a faculty corner video where we address certain topics with these experts, these guest speakers in our class. Um, and then we have our discussion board and we have artifacts of learning. Um, the student needs assessment is really important because before you can actually begin designing a course, you need to know who your students are, what gaps they may have, what, uh, what their employers are seeking. So that's one of the activities that we actually also talk about. Um, <coughs> and that's something that you two are addressing in yes. your, your session, you know great that you have all these ideas for these programs, but is it for the students? Is it necessary? Mm -hmm. um, so then if you go to the other ones. So module two, the very first thing we address is how to start designing, and that foundation is the learning objective and backwards planning. So introducing them to the idea of starting with the objective and then moving forward from there with your design. Uh, module three. Sorry. <laughs> module three is our dedicated accessibility module. This is one of the ones that we enforced a face-to-face -face meeting so that we could sit them down in a computer lab and actually show them, you know, step by step how to make their files accessible for their students. Um, we also have lots and lots and lots of resources in this one so that they can go back. And, and view them at their, at their convenience uh, to make their stuff accessible. We have them submit in this one a syllabus, an accessible syllabus, because the syllabus includes not just headings, but also images usually, and they have tables. So they have like a plethora of accessibility problems, right, that they can then tackle and make sure that it's accessible. Um, then module four, is assessment. So now that we've talked about accessibility, we can now move forward with the actual design of the course. So now we have accessibility at the forefront, we can think about how we're assessing. And the reason, uh, the real value in this particular module is that a lot of instructors think that assessment is 
that test bank that came with the publisher's <laughs> book, right? Um, and so we have to broaden and expand that definition to include informal, informal testing, right. formative, summative, you know, um, authentic, rigorous assessments. So we open their eyes to all the things that could be considered assessment in their course. Um, and so they get very excited about this one. Module five is instructional materials. Now that we know what our objectives are and how they're gonna show that they've met them, then we move forward in now these are the things that we're gonna curate and that we're going to create to make sure that they can actually accomplish these goals. So in this one, we ask them to curate materials and put it in the blueprint form. So they're saying, okay, I want this YouTube video, this article, this chapter from the textbook. Uh, I want them to read this blog and so on. And then we're also tasking them with creating their own micro lecture video. Um, I think it's a five minute video for this one. We ask them to develop a script. So they, they develop their script and they, they share their link to their video within this module uh, to get them started in their course. Then module six is the learning activities one. So here's where we'll show you an example of what our soft chalk lesson looks like. So same structure. Uh, once again, this one was unique in that we had to span, oh, because we're in student view. But it's also an internet explorer. Firefox doesn't like it. Um, <laughs> Oops. Anyway, um, so are you familiar with Soft Chalk? Yes. I am. Yes. Okay. Um, so Soft Chalk is a lesson authoring tool, and it's very similar to like an online Word document, if you will, and then it makes lessons that look like little web pages. Um, and we build interactivity into them too, so they have a crossword. Oh. Um, so this one was unique in that we had to address how to have activities in the face-to-face -face and the online environment, how to leverage the tools for both. Uh, so this is a little bit of what it looks like. We go over the standards of Quality Matters. This is why we're doing it and move forward into authentic, rigorous, what do these things look like in the actual classroom. So. If you click here, a discussion that has undefined expectations is still in development. You cannot submit that yet, right? Um, and so on. We have quality as relevant. So just because you think that yours meets quality doesn't necessarily mean that it's quality for the students. The students are 21st century learners. We're preparing them for 21st century jobs that don't exist yet. So we need to keep that in mind and develop these soft skills, right? These employable skills. Um, if you go to the next page. <coughs> so this one talks about, like what Jessica was saying, you need to have very defined uh, expectations of the face-to-face -face class activities. And this one takes them through a model called GRASPS. So you identify your goal for the activity, the role, the audience, the situation, the product and performance. And so we give an example of M&M bulk shipping. This is found online, but you're more than welcome to take a picture. If you'll go to your completed prompt, Jess. So if you want to take a picture of that one, that's what it would end up looking like when you put all of those components together. Um, and then here's a community outreach event example also. Uh, yeah, for service learning, we have we have service learning courses. Um, next page. So here's where they would put it in order. You know, this is your face to face and your online activities. How should they go about? You scroll down, and then yeah, we're good on time. So yeah, so. That's an example of what one of the lessons looks like within the larger module. And then we have the technology in and out of the classroom. The cohort votes on the technology that they want to learn more about. And then we have a face-to-face -face session explicitly for that group so that they can learn more about it. Uh, and then the course overview. So that's the completion. 
and we do offer templates so that they, they, they're not alone in the development process. Can we just? Mm -hmm. uh, where are your questions right now? Okay. Can do it. You, any questions thus far? Um, yes. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's uh, any before, but um, the activities that you do in, in Softshop are are integrated with the Gradebook in mm -hmm. in Blackboard. Yes. Have you ever had a, a problem with this? We had a problem with people using Internet Explorer. Okay. We also had a problem with people clicking complete. <laughs> okay. So is this providing instructions? Okay, several years ago we, we buy some licenses and uh, we have the problem that the uh, some um, the HTML was a little bit dated. It was like was this before the cloud? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's there's been there's we now push everyone that used to the, use the old one to the cloud. The cloud ha has made life so much more easier. Okay. Like, no more problems about synchronizing, like if people forget to synchronize. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it saved a lot of, of, uh, of that headache. Uh, the only thing is, like, that recommendation about expected browsers to use these. We now only save Firefox and Chrome, and that's it. That's the recommended browsers that we, we ask for. Um, so, yeah. When, when we had the, uh, the standalone version of Softshop, there was a lot of problems synchronizing with the, with the Gray Center or even deploying the actual modules. Mm -hmm. uh, but not, not that they sell the, the uh, accounts on the cloud. It's, it's very easy now. It's, okay. it's seamless in a way. Yes. Okay. So they, well, these are just our templates, so they don't have to start from scratch. And we actually have plugins specific for hybrid learning, too. Um, the development phase, it takes four to six months to develop an uh, online and hybrid course. <laughs> and so we do have a revised revision phase too when they do a quality matters review. Once they meet that review, uh, for the hybrid academy, we just do one review. I, we sh uh, for, for our blueprinting process, it's two. Um, once they complete all that process, they do get a stipend. They don't get the stipend before, they must meet everything after. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions? The, the CC, we look at the copyrights. Oh, okay. And that's actually part of one of the modules on yes. instructional materials is number one, accessibility, number two, copyright, and then it's alignment. Yes. Yeah. Now with the open educational resources, at least the state of Texas is pushing a lot for that, trying to make the education more affordable for students. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of materials there, of course, that need to be curated, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the work that the faculty have to do. I mean, they're the subject matter experts. They're the ones who actually need to know what material is good for the course. Yes, yeah, so the faculty has also a, a total freedom in choosing what type of activities, what type of content. So each year, for example, if I take Spanish or English, English class, um, uh, each year I can, for example, if I didn't pass the course, maybe the next year that I will take it, uh, the activities uh, evaluation will be different, correct? Right? It's up to the faculty. The faculty have the opportunity to update the course every semester. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's the question. I, I mean, there's there are some things that that they have to stay because mm -hmm. it's part of the template or it's right. part of the quality minus requirements. It's part of the quality assurance. Mm -hmm. But they can change activities. They can change, as long as they align with the objectives. Right. What's more stringent is our accelerated programs that go through the blueprinting process. And then those programs, they are developing master courses. So these become the master. And certain departments are very stringent. You cannot change it. This is it. This is, you can't, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. In the we are working with master course, right? Yeah. 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 Course. Yes. And then for the hybrid, it's yeah, a different. Uh, yeah. Any additional questions? And this one, just to say, professional development is not enough. You need to have accountability measures. And it's not just what we saw, too, because even when we did the full complete course to be uh, met, met with hybrid, when we looked at their other courses, some of some of the faculty were not changing to that new practice. Some of them still kept, like, there's, their other courses would be a repository. It's not very well structured. Um, and but So we needed, so what's, what's going to happen now is we have a distance learning policy. Uh, from top down, the message is all courses must be quality assurance standards. So that's helped us a lot. And then, are we done? Yeah, I yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can you finish or let her? Yeah. Okay. Okay.
Oh, sorry. No, and on the instructional designer side, one of the ones that I supported, um, he actually invited me to one of his first face-to-face -face classes so that I came in as the expert and I explained to the students, this is what hybrid is, this is what you should expect from your course, this is what you should expect from your instructor. And so I stayed and I helped with the activities and everything, so I was involved in that class as the guest speaker. <coughs> And it also helped me promote our department. If you ever have any questions about Blackboard, about your course, you can come on over. So it was, it was a nice experience for everyone. And he, those students were very successful. Um, I, I wouldn't say because of it, but they were. <laughs> <laughs> and she brings up a good point because a lot of students don't know what hybrid is. Yeah. So you need to explain what that is the first time. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank so, you. Uh, applause. <laughs> <laughs>